start off, um, we did cover these questions last time. I just want to recap the important bits before we actually go through the different adjustments. So we know that the financial reporting year is 12 months long. Yeah. When looking at 12 months, transactions may not always relate to that financial year. So 12 months is the key in terms of timing. And then when looking at transactions, they're not always going to relate to the financial year. And that's why we have adjustments. Adjustments are only created on the last day of the financial year to account for any differences in terms of timing perhaps, or a situation where we might have left out certain transactions that weren't captured in the current financial year. So we've got a general process to follow. Identify the accounts. How many accounts do we have? Six. six. Perfect. And what are the six? Okay, capital, drawings, income, expenses, assets okay. and liabilities. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. So those are the most important elements. It doesn't matter how basic or advanced the accounting is going to be, you're always going to keep it simple and take it back to its fundamental elements. So the elements are key and we'll, we'll be applying those here in some of these adjustments. Right, so let's start with prepaid expenses. Okay, so Brogan, let's start with you. What is the effect on the elements? Okay, prepaid expenses are asset. Okay, why do you say it's an asset? Because it's already been paid. There's no obligation to pay it. Perfect. So if it's not an obligation, what is it? It's a source. Oh, it's a resource. It's a resource. 100%. Great. Okay, so you've got the correct account. You know it's an asset. So if I know it's an asset, is it going up or down? It's going up. Great. So assets go up on which side? On the debit, debit side. Perfect. Okay, good. So that's how we get one half of the transaction. But remember, all transactions have two sides. You have a debit and you have a credit. So always try to find the easiest side to get first. So here, we looked at the debit being the asset for the prepaid expense. And yeah. why do we credit the expense then? Because it's going down. Correct. And why is it going down? Why can't I leave it at the current amount? Because it's already been paid for, so you have to decrease it off the account. Okay, good. So does that expense relate to the current financial year? Yes. No, it doesn't. Because remember, how long is the financial year? 12 months. 12 months. So if it's a prepaid expense, does that relate to that period or future periods? Future. Future, correct. So if I've prepaid for something, I'm actually looking at greater than 12 months. Do you agree? I do. All right. So when looking at the actual prepaid expense, the important bit is this, the 12 months during the financial year, not after, not before, but for that 12 months. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, then I said we're going to ex uh, we're going to talk a bit more about the cash flow because that's important when we look at cash flow statements at a later stage. So this is the basics that you've covered before. Okay, so I'm 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 happy that you guys are happy with the basic analysis in terms of how do I interpret transactions. Now I want to test if you guys are okay with the actual interpretation from a cash flow point of view. So let's talk about money coming in and money coming out. If it's a prepaid expense, when does the cash go in or out? Uh, during the year or after? During. Correct. Okay, so do you agree from a cash flow point of view? Okay, and we'll we'll definitely talk about this in more detail when we get to the cash flow statement. All right, because the cash flow statement is very specific to bank and inflows and outflows. But you're not going to be able to do the cash flow statement very easily if you don't understand the accounting. Okay, so we need to understand what the accountants do because if we do, then we can then apply the finance, okay, being the cash flow. Okay, the cash flow statement is actually looking more at inflows and outflows in terms of finance. Here we're looking at the accounting in terms of how do we record an actual amount being the asset in the books of the entity. Okay, so you said that the current payment, the outflow, would occur during the 12 months, yes? Yeah. Great. Okay, so do you agree in terms of cash flow, there's going to be an outflow in the current financial year, so there'll be a minus here? Yeah. Okay, but that cash flow relate, relates to which period though? 
The future period. Exactly. Okay, that relates to this period in time, next year, not the current year. So, if you look at that, a prepaid expense, what does a prepaid expense do to cash flow in the current year? Um, decrease it. Correct. Okay, it decreases it because you've actually spent more cash this year. Will you spend more or less cash next year? Yes. Correct. Okay. And that's the important note that you need to remember in terms of cash flow. Just think about it in terms of inflows and outflows. All right. So we're looking at the accounting. We've only looked at the accounting up until now. Only when you get to the cash flow statement, do you actually change your perspective slightly because now we look at inflows and outflows <coughs> rather than accruals. Okay. Income that's earned or expenses that are paid. Yeah. Is that all right? That's perfect. Okay, good. All right, the next one, Kirsty, you've got okay. this one to help us with. Accrued expenses, give us your answer. What is the effect on the elements? That's a liability. 100%, why? <clears throat> um, because of obligation to pay. Perfect, see, that's great. You guys are using the definitions. Those are important because we'll learn about other types of account in terms of those six elements and it doesn't matter what they are in the core basic let's say fundamental it's still an element so this one is a liability 100 percent because we haven't paid it yet if it hasn't been paid it must still be paid so there's definitely an obligation perfect so give us the why in terms of the adjustment journal entry why do we debit expenses and credit accrued expenses um, because your deb well expenses goes up on the debit side. Correct. And accrued expenses, well, they're going down on the credit side. I'm not sure why. Okay, think about it. What is an accrued expense? Well, that's it's because you still have to pay it. Yeah, but what what is it? Asset liability, income expense. Liability. Liability. So what happens to liability on the credit side? It goes up. It's increasing. So do you agree? We said an accrued expense is a liability. You're creating a liability. So if I'm creating a liability, did I have a liability to start with? Yes. No, I didn't. Because I have no liability, but I'm creating one because I have to pay in the future. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so when looking at the adjustment journal entry, we're debiting the expenses because they're too low. I still need to pay for those expenses. But I know it's for the current financial year, so let's show that. The expense that I need to pay, is it in the current financial year or out the financial year? Which one? In or out the financial year? In. Correct. Okay, so this would be the one month that I haven't paid. Best example, uh, water and lights, the, um, the bill that you get from the municipality. Can the municipality charge you ahead of time? No. No, because they don't know how much you've used. So when paying for water and lights, it gets paid in arrears. So this month, which is it's the 1st of February today, Okay, so now they'll be able to bill you for the last month because the last month has now taken place. Okay, the, the time has elapsed. Yeah. All right, so when looking at accrued expenses, it's for the current year. I've only paid for 11 months. Must I still pay for one month? Yes, I do. So if I'm looking at this, that's a liability because it still needs to be paid for the 12 months that I have for the current financial year. Does that make sense? Yeah. Great. Okay, so we know this is a liability. If I'm creating a liability, I have to credit the account. And that's why you credit the accrued expenses. Yeah. All right, perfect. And then we've got debit expenses and the reason for that it's understated we spoke about that in the diagram i've only paid for 11 i need to pay for 12 so one month is outstanding 
in terms of not having been recorded in your accounting records. And that's why to record an expense, I need to debit it. Do you guys have yeah. to do that one? I'm happy. Yeah. Great. Just a note again about the cash flow because this will be more important later when we look at the cash flow statement. If I'm looking at inflows and outflows, remember I'm focusing on the 12 months. So, is an accrued expense an inflow or outflow? What do you th what do you think? It's going to be an inflow. Do you think it's an inflow? No, it's outflow, it's outflow. because my no, I think I think it's inflow. Do you think it's an inflow? Yeah, I don't know if I'm right, but it's because it's money coming in. Okay, but is there a flow of cash, inverted commas? No. Well, not yet, because it's an expense for the period not yet paid. So, okay. do you agree, what, what is the accountant going to do for the 12 months? Are they going to show 12 months, or are they going to show 11 months? What are they going to show? You show 11 months. Mm -hmm. Well, no, the accountant is going to follow the accrual principle. So if the accountant follows the accrual, do they show 11 months or 12 months? 12. Exactly, they show 12 months because the accountant is using the accrual principle. The accountant doesn't care if you've paid it or not. The accountant wants to know for the 12 months, what were you supposed to pay? Because that, that's the true reflection of the 12 months that you've been operating for from the beginning to the end of the year. Yeah. Okay, so what is the accountant going to do? They're going to show 12 months, but is that correct? No, it's not. It's not, because you've only paid for 11, 11. months. All right, so you spoke about an increase in cash flow, which is actually right. Why? Because the accountant will be recording 12 months when we should actually be recording 11 months. So we need to reduce the actual payment by one month to show the cash outflow. Yeah. So the cash outflow will decrease. Okay, because the accountant has shown 12 months worth of outflow in terms of a expense, but I should only be showing 11 months. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, yeah don't, so don't worry too much about this now. I will discuss it again later on. Okay. I'm just trying to bring in one or two concepts now because this is still basics. This is still what you've covered in 1502. So there's nothing new yet. Uh, I'm just trying to pull some of the new material out as well in certain scenarios because in the cash flow statement, this becomes quite a big problem when it comes to adjustments as part of the financial statement. So you'll, you'll always have adjustments. You've seen adjustments before. You'll still see adjustments going forward. We just need to focus on what are we actually trying to, let's say, take away from the actual analysis. So here we're looking at the accrual being the adjustment, i.e. accrued expense, versus cash, which we'll look at later in, in a lot more detail. Yeah, perfect. All right, next one, Brogan. Okay, well, I think consumable inventory is asset. Correct, why? Because it's something that the company owns. Good, perfect, okay. That's right, so it's something that the company uh, um, owns in terms of they've not used all of the stationery and they've kept some of it for next year. And when do adjustments occur? Um, after the financial period. Yes, at the end of the financial year. So you'll only ever recognize stationery as stationery on hand or inverted commas inventory because you haven't used it. Yeah. For that one particular day. After that day has 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 gone, okay, we'll then refer refer back to it as being an expense. Okay, so it's purely for disclosure. The adjustments are made to make your financial statements more accurate. That's the only reason why we do it. Yeah. And can you explain the credit for us? Um well it's gonna go the credits is the stationery is gonna go down. Correct. Why? Because it's not it's not the companies. They don't have to pay for it. It's it's not expense. 
okay good it's not an expense yet that's right so if you look at the 12 months okay remember I've bought stationery for those 12 months and let's say I've bought 10 okay yeah. I've bought 10 but at the end of the financial year I still have two left over so what does that mean did I use all 10 during the year no, you use only eight. Exactly. Okay, and that's why we re we represent this part, okay, the two as being an asset that we still haven't used yet, because yeah. it is a a consumable inventory on hand type of scenario. Why? Because if I look at this, I've only used eight up until the end of the financial year. Okay, so yep. two hasn't been used yet, and that's why we'll use it next year. So this two that was left over from the current year will obviously be used in the in the following year. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Right. So I've just put a note there: not used, reduce the expense. That's why we're crediting the the station. Yeah. Okay. Right, number four, Kirsty again. Help us with this one. Okay, I'm just writing it down. Shay, do you still need that? No, 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 I'm done. Okay, Thanks. if I'm going too fast, let me know, then I'll slow down. Okay. Um, what is the effect on the elements? It's income. Is it income? Income received in advance. I would think it's income. All right. So if it's income you've received in advance, what what obligation or what resource does that create? What what is it? Um, well, wouldn't it be, be an asset? Is it a resource you control? Yes. Well, you know, uh, um, you don't have to pay it. You know, there's no obligation to pay it because you're receiving it. You're receiving cash, but have you earned it? Oh, is it? No, it's an expense, isn't it? No, it's not an expense. Think about it. I've received something that I haven't earned. Is that mine then? <laughs> no, it's a liability. Exactly. Okay, why? There's an obligation to return the income or to yeah, render the service or to give the product. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so income received in advance is an amount that you've received that isn't yours yet because it yep. hasn't been earned yeah so how do we create liabilities what do we do uh, you have to you have an obligation to pay so it's going to be on the credit side exactly because okay so you've got the credit for the liability and then we're debiting the income why we just spoke about it it's overstated it hasn't been earned. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it does. Okay, so again, let's draw a little diagram and let's show the cash flow for this one. If I'm looking at income received in advance, it relates to the 12 months and there's a portion that relates to future periods. Okay, so if I'm looking at the cash flow, inflow or outflow, it's a, <clears throat> isn't it an inflow of cash? Correct. Okay, have you received more or less? More. Correct. Okay, so do you agree in the current financial year, how much am I going to record? The 12 months or more than 12 months? Um, more, um, more than 12 months. Correct. Okay, so if I'm looking at income received in advance for this particular period, for the period 1st of January to 31st December. Yeah. I'm going to be recording in my accounting records a cash inflow of how much? More than 12 months. Do you agree? Yeah. 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 But what is the accountant going to do to their books? Are they going to decrease that amount or increase that amount? When they decrease, decrease. it? Yes, they will. Okay, they'll decrease it because... The accountant is going to say, well, it doesn't matter if you receive, let's say, 17 months worth of income. OK, 
Okay, so an extra five months. You know that at the beginning of the year, you received a cash inflow of 17 months worth of income. But yeah. at this point in time, the accountant is going to minus five months worth of income because they're going to say, well, you haven't earned it yet, so you can't record it as income. You can only yeah. record it as income in the following year because that's when you're entitled to the next five months worth of income. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's the cash flow. So income received in advance creates a bigger cash flow in the current year and a smaller cash flow in the in the next year. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, and how about this one? Crude income, what is it? Isn't it also a liability? Why do you say liability? Because there's an obligation to pay. Is there an obligation to pay? De define it for me. What is a crude income? You've got the definition here. Well, crude is it's still owing. It's income that you've earned for the okay. period which has not been received. Yeah. Okay. So it's an asset. Why? Because um, it's something you still haven't received as a resource. Yes. Okay. So you're entitled to it. Okay. You've yeah. rendered the, the service. You've given the product. All right. You've done what you're supposed to do in terms of the actual agreement. And that creates an obligation to pay for your for your customer for your for your yeah. your your um your debtor. Okay, so this is the key here in terms of similar to debtors. That's that's important. Yeah. Okay, accrued income is similar to debtors. And what is yeah. a debtor? Someone um, owes you money. Correct. And why do they owe you? Uh. Because it's like a company, it's an individual that owes the company money. So when do individuals owe companies money? What what has to when happen? You give them something. Yeah, when you give them a product or service. Correct. When there's a credit sale, nice. Yeah. Okay, so a credit sale would create a debtor. Yeah. So let's define the why or let's let's answer the why in terms of um debit. So we know we have to debit the accrued income. Why? Um, because it's, it's, in, going, it's going up. It's going up. Why is it going up? What type of account? Uh, the assets. The assets. Okay, so always break it down to elements first. And once you've got the element, then you can understand how to treat it. Okay, so I know it's an asset. What am I doing? I'm recording an accrued income. If I'm recording an accrued income, I never had it before, so I need to create the account. Why yeah, do I yeah. credit income? Because it's decreasing. Why is it increasing? De no, decreasing. Which one? No, I said it's decreasing. Uh, the credit income no, is going to decrease, the income... won't it? Okay, oh, no, it if it's crediting it's income, what does the rule say? Increase or decrease? It's increasing increase. on the credit side. Yes, so that's correct. Increase is right, but why? Because it's money that's owed to you, so it's going to increase. Exactly. It's understated. You need to recognize more. Correct. Okay. You yeah. need to increase it because you're entitled to it. It hasn't been re re received, but even though it hasn't been received, it still needs to be recorded because this is the accrual basis. Yeah. Yeah. Great. You guys happy with those? Yes. Okay. Those are important from a cash flow point of view because you are going to see them. Okay, so with the accrued income, let's discuss the cash flow again with this one. All right, so <clears throat> accrued income is income that has been earned for the period which has not been received. So if it hasn't been received, it's going to be received. So if I'm looking at the 12 months, I would only have recorded eight months. Yeah. This portion over here is still outstanding. Four months yeah. will be outstanding. Okay, so if I'm looking at cash flow, inflow or outflow? Outflow. Okay, well, the first bit would be considered an inflow. So this will tick it, and that's an inflow. Okay, because you've received the eight months and you've recorded the eight months. Do you agree? There's no difference between accrual and and um, cash. 
Yeah. Great. Okay, but what is the accountant then going to do? Then he's going to... Yeah, the sorry, yeah, carry on. Um, the four months are going to be a cash outflow. Well, before that, the four months will be included. So the accountant is going to show an extra four months when they shouldn't have. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, no, I do. Correct. So if they're showing more than they should, what must we actually do to the four months from a cash flow point of view? Is it, the is the twelve months cash flow? Yes. No, the twelve months isn't cash flow. Only eight is. Okay, but then the four months are going to be a cash outflow. Well, the four months will be a decrease. You'd have to take that out of the inflows. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. if I take something out of the inflows, you could possibly refer to it as being an outflow. But that's okay. not the right way of doing it. But you've got the correct understanding in terms of having to take it out. Yeah. Okay. Good. So so remember, accountants can either leave things out or put things in. So in this scenario, the accountant would have put in an extra four months worth of income where, where they shouldn't have. Yeah. Great. Okay. So that's just something to consider in terms of inflows and outflows. Just to think about when do I actually receive cash? Okay. And when do I pay cash? That becomes the, the big focus when you look at the cash flow. Just think about it as receipts and payments, similar to like a bank recon. How much do you receive? How much do you pay? And then what's the balancing figure? Yeah. Great. All right, a credit okay. loss. Kirsty, what is this? It's an expense. Perfect. Why? Because you're making a loss. Yes. Yeah. Correct. There's an outflow of economic benefit. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah. So help us with the adjustment journal entry. Why do we debit and credit those accounts? Well, you're going to debit the credit loss because it's going to... The bad debt is going to it's got, it's an expense and an expense goes, no, wait. Almost. Try again. Won't it increase? Why? Am I looking at the expense as an account or am I looking at it as something that I'm paying? Well, no, it's, it's an account. It's, it's an like account. A, so yeah, well, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you creating the account or are you removing the account? Removing. No. Are you creating? No. You're creating so, the account. You're creating the bad debt. Your credit or losses will are uh, an expense, and your expenses will go up on the debit side. Yes. Okay. When we say expense goes up, we're we're not saying that the expense is increasing. We're saying that we're recording more of an expense. Okay. All right. So we know that this is an expense. Writing off bad debt. Yeah. We didn't have bad debt before the end of the year. Now we've reached the end of the year and we realize that a certain amount of debtors aren't going to pay. So what do we do? We create the expense. If I'm creating an expense, I need to record it somewhere. Yeah. So how do I record an expense? Remember, an expense, you need to think about it as an account that you're recording. So before, did I have this expense? No. No. Now I do. So to record the expense, I must increase that account because yeah. by increasing the account, I record more of an expense. Yeah. Are you happy with that? Yes, I am. Okay, so now help me with the credit then. Um, well, the debtors are going to go a decrease and it decreases on the credit side because it's an asset. Exactly. Assets are going to be decreasing because you're reducing the amount of debtors because they haven't or they aren't going to pay now yeah. and they're not going to pay later either. It's a bad debt. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so credit debtors because there's no payment and we're not going to receive the cash inflow from the debtors, right? So we'll then write this off. Yeah. Let's discuss the cash flow. Is this cash flow? No. no. Perfect. 100% correct. Because think about it. A credit loss, what are you doing? Are you are you giving someone cash because you're paying them? No, you're losing cash. You, no, you're not losing cash. You're losing something you never had in the first place. Okay. Okay, because remember, think about debtors. What is debtors? Is debtors cash flow? No. 
No, debtors isn't cash flow. Debtors is someone's promise to pay in the future. Yeah. Okay, so are they going to pay in the future? No. No, they're not. So a credit loss is a non-cash item. So if it's a non-cash item, do I care about the credit losses in a cash flow statement? No. No, because we're dealing with cash. So I'm not going to worry about non-cash items because they're not important for the actual statement, for cash flow. Okay. So we yeah. need to know what something is. If we know what something is, it's so easy to treat it. No, it is. Okay. What about okay. this? Depreciation is expense. Good. Why? Because it's decreasing the value of something. Yes. Okay. It's that use of the asset. Yeah. So now give us the why here in terms of debit, depreciation, credit accumulated. Well, expense increases on the debit side so so you're going to debit the depreciation yes i'm going to recognize more good and then and then the accumulated depreciation is going to go down because why it's, no because why do you say down well it's going to decrease what what type of account is it um is it a liability no a non-current no yes yeah, a non-current asset ne Okay, this one's a tricky one. It's a negative asset. Yes, negative asset, yeah. Okay, why a negative asset? Because it's decreasing in value. No, it's because of disclosure. Okay. Okay, so there isn't any other way to describe it other than a negative asset because of disclosure purposes. Right, if you think about property, plant, and equipment, PPE, Okay, you did a note. In the PPE note, what do you show against the cost price of a vehicle? The accumulated depreciation. Correct. So what is cost minus accumulated depreciation? Um, exp no, um, cost va uh, carrying value. Carrying value, 100%. Great. Okay, and that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the accumulated depreciation as being a negative asset only because we need to disclose it against the value of the asset to get the carrying value. Okay, yeah. CV here represents carrying value. Yeah. So carrying value is cost minus accumulated depreciation. Again, we've looked at this before. We're going to look at it a bit later again. Okay, I'm going to recap some PPE um, in terms of the depreciation Okay, so um, cost price and diminishing balance, um, straight line rather, and diminishing balance. Okay. Are you guys alright with those seven? Perfect. Yeah. Great. Okay. So there's a summary. We've gone through all seven now. We know which are assets, which are liabilities, and which are expenses. Those are adjustments that can occur in the actual trial balance. Remember we said on Monday that your exams are all going to be focused around adjustments and a trial balance. You'll be given yeah. a trial balance and you'll be asked to create the statements. Disclosure is everything in this course in terms of the actual exam. You, you need to draw up the statements. You'll have different statements to draw up. You'll have different notes to draw up, but it's all about disclosure. It's all about taking those adjustments and cor correctly showing the users what the actual statements are going to look like. Yeah. Right, we've got a few other revision notes here in terms of what you've covered before. So now we're going to deal with allowances. You'll see yeah. when we look at the new um, examples in terms of partnerships, uh, when we look at that next week, Monday, when we start with the first um, chapter that's new okay, in this module, you'll see different types of allowances. So we first need to understand what is this whole term meaning in terms of when when someone talks about an allowance what are they actually trying to say so i've given you a note here about allowances that you're familiar with you're yeah. familiar with an allowance for bad debt do you agree credit losses yes yeah. all right so we've got this allowance which you're familiar with so businesses can choose to create an allowance for future periods yeah so does this does this relate to the current year no 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 
this relates to the future this relates to something that we think is going to happen so an allowance sometimes they also call this a provision yeah sorry. yeah <clears throat> okay so you can call it a provision you can call it an allowance but you're providing or you're accounting for something that's going to happen in the future yeah like but a future when are you doing it in the current year in the current year for the oh. correct that's 100 percent right yeah. so you're providing for something today that relates to something in the future yeah Right, so the first bit that we've got here is the allowance of credit losses. We first need to understand what type of element this is. Remember, if we know what something is, we'll know how to treat it. So what Isn't is an allowance? What type of account? Expense. No. An allowance. That's the credit losses, what is that? That's the expense. That's the expense. So what is the allowance? An asset. Almost a negative asset. Okay. Okay. Again, why? Because of disclosure. Right. Oh, when do credit losses arise? At the end of the financial year. Or du no, during the financial year. Okay. Credit losses arise when when debtors don't pay. Do you agree? Do you agree? No, I do agree. Yeah. Okay. So, if a credit loss will arise when a debt doesn't pay. What are we doing with a provision? We're providing or we're allowing for an amount that we know isn't so going to be collected in the future. Yeah. So what are we doing today? We're creating a negative asset. We're understating our debtors. Why? So it prevents you um, at the financial year end because... Am of... I going to receive all of us? No, you're not. No, I'm not. Okay, so that's why we reduce the debtors. Because think about it this way. Okay? Debtors. What type of account is debtors? An asset. Correct. Okay, so if debtors is an asset, you are going to be showing 100% of it in your... Which statement? Uh, statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. Correct. Okay, but based on prior experience, the business will create an allowance or a provision for 5% that never ever pay. So based on history, based on the past, there's a certain portion of debtors who never pay you, who always default on their loans or their yeah. credits. So if that's the case, can I show 100% to my users? No. No, that would be that would be false. That wouldn't be the truth. So if I have a debtor of a hundred, I'm gonna have to minus five percent because this is an amount that I know I'm going to have to write off when now or in the future. No, um, now. No, in the future. Well, isn't it now for the future? I'm I'm recognizing it now that okay. because it relates to the future. Okay. Okay. So, do you agree if I sold a hundred? I've sold a hundred, I have a hundred recorded in the books. Based on past experience, 5% of my customers don't pay. So I'm providing for an allowance now that relates to the future loss. Okay. Okay, and that's what you're doing. And that's what the allowance is actually providing for. The allowance is this, the provision for an amount today that relates to the future. Future, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we know it's what type of account? Negative asset. Correct. So if it's a negative asset, how do I create the account? Do I debit or credit it? Credit. I would credit it 100%. Okay, then we've got a note here about adjusting the allowance. If I decrease the allowance, I'm going to have to debit it. Why? Because that means you're getting paid more than you thought you would be paying. Uh, no, you're, you're, you're overthinking it. Uh, keep it simple. Think about the rule. Okay, what type of account is an allowance? Um, negative mm -hmm. asset. Negative asset. Good. So if it's a negative asset, how, it's will, I, it's hard. how will I increase it or decrease it? How, well, let's, let's look at the decrease. We spoke about decrease. How will I decrease a negative asset? Well, what balance would a negative asset have? A negative one. 
but a debit or credit? It's going to be a credit. Correct. It's going to be a credit. So how would I decrease a credit balance? You have to credit it on the credit side and then debit on the, and then you have to debit the negative um, allowance. Okay. So just say that again. How The question was, how do I decrease a allowance? You're going to have to credit the credit negative. What? The negative allowance? No, you can't credit and debit the allowance. Okay, so then you're going to... Won't you credit the bank? No. No, okay, don't, don't worry about um, the, the credits. Just focus on this account, the negative asset. So let's, let's, let's um, take a few steps back. Okay. A negative asset has what type of balance? A negative one. A credit. A credit balance because it is a negative asset. Remember, yeah. what's, the def what's the rule for an asset? Plus on the debit, minus on the credit. credit. So if an allowance, if the allowance has a negative balance in terms of being a negative asset, where is it? It's on the left or the right? It's on the right. It's on the right. So you've got 100 sitting there. Yeah. Okay. So now I have 100 as a negative asset. If I want to decrease the allowance, what do I do to it? You're going to have to credit it. No, if I credit it, it's going to get bigger. So you're, you're going to, to, you're to, going to debit, debit it. it. Yes, that's the answer. So you see, it's the opposite. Yeah. Okay, because you need to think about it as a negative asset. Just think about the rule. Negative assets have what balance? Uh, credit. Exactly. So if I'm going to be making it bigger, I'll have to credit it. And if I make it smaller, I'm going to have to... Debit it. Debit it, exactly. Okay, because it is a negative asset. Yeah. Okay. All right, then just a note at the bottom. You can process the actual credit losses um, against the actual allowance or the provision, or you can record it separately. Okay. Uh, this was something that was debated on um, last time you did accounts, which was 1502. Okay, we're going to keep it the same in terms of how you NISA accounts for it. Okay, it doesn't matter which way you do it, the net effect is still the same. You need to tend to write it off as a separate account rather than writing off against the provision. Right, so we'll just be doing it that way because that's the way they tend to do it in all the examples. Perfect. Right. Next bit, some revision. Okay, we'll, we'll just cover the theory here and then we'll take a break and then we'll come back and then we'll look at some examples. Okay. Right, two methods of depreciation, straight line and diminishing balance. The first one is straight line and we use the cost. So if I'm using the cost, is the depreciation going to change? Um, no. Why not? No, it is. So it is because the cost is going to decrease. No, the cost no, won't the cost change. <laughs> Think about it. No, it won't, sorry. What <clears throat> is the cost? The cost is what? You paid for the car. Exactly, what you paid for the car. So yep. if we use that as an example, okay, whatever is paid for the car, can I change that cost price? Oh, you can't. It's mm -hmm. a price that it's it's a set price. Correct. Okay, that's that's set because it's in the past. I can't undo what has already happened. Yeah. Okay, so in the past we would have purchased the vehicle. If I purchase the vehicle, it's going to carry a cost. Yeah. So will the cost price change? No, it won't. No, it will stay, won't. Right. It'll stay the same. Correct. So will the depreciation change? No. Why not? No, sorry, the depreciation will change because it's going to decrease. The depreciation <laughs> won't change because it's based on the cost. Okay. Okay. What will change though? The carrying value. Exactly. Okay, carrying value will change. Okay. But cost won't change. Cost will never change, even for the diminishing balance. It doesn't matter what method you're using. The cost is the historical cost. Okay, so you've learned about historical costs previously from inventory and, and, and those chapters. So just to mention it again here, historical cost is something that has occurred in history. So we can't change what has happened. So if I'm using the cost price as the basis of my calculation for depreciation, it's not going to change the depreciation amount. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, good. Just a note here, is there a scrap value? No. There won't be with straight line because you'll write the asset off until zero. Yeah. Okay, but 
sometimes you might have scenarios where they might talk about a residual value. Okay, and a residual value is an amount that will be left over, which the accountant will specify up front. Okay, so that's just something to consider. I haven't seen it too much in this particular module. Um, it came up actually in 1502, right? It comes up later on when you do uh, more of the disclosure in, in other modules at a second and third year level. But at the moment, it's still quite basic in terms of don't worry about the scrap value. It's just something that you should maybe consider if it does come up. But as I said, in terms of the examples in this particular module, the scrap, um, the scrap value or the residual value isn't something that um, that comes up. All right. Yeah. Okay. Then the second method, diminishing balance. What do I use as the basis of the calculation? Okay. There's the answer, the carrying value. Will the carrying value change? Yes. Of course. Okay. Because the carrying value is what the asset is actually worth at that point in time. Yeah. So is the depreciation going to change if it's based on the carrying value? Yes, it is. Yes, it will. Okay, so the amounts will always change over time because the carrying value is changing. So yeah. if the base of the calculation, if that changes, everything else will change as well. Yeah. Okay, just with this one, there's always a scrap value because you'll never ever get zero. It's a repetitive process. So you'll keep, you'll keep, de you'll keep uh, depreciating the asset and the depreciation will be getting smaller and smaller and smaller and so will the carrying value but it'll tend towards zero it'll, it'll never actually get to, to to zero yeah okay then we've just got a note here about the disposal and the asset realization is this something that they're going to ask you to do as a separate question what do you think no no they won't and the reason for that is they've already tested it they've already tested this in 1502 but this is going to come up in cash flow. Okay. All right. So you're not going to have to actually create a PP note. Sometimes you might have to. Sometimes you might not. Um, there have been a few questions where they have tested PP, but they've kept it normally quite simple. The focus generally here in this module is more on the newer um, chapters. So like the things that you haven't seen before, like partnerships, like CCs and companies. Okay, so this particular application in terms of disposals and realizations, okay, in terms of the assets being written off or taken away from your accounting records is something to consider, but not a focal point. Okay, you're not gonna get a five or 10 mark question on its own, just covering the asset disposal, but it'll be part of a bigger question and the question that you'll be looking at is the cash flow. So when we do do cash flow, you are going to have to draw up an asset disposal, asset realization account because I need that account to find bank. All right, so I'm gonna draw up a quick little sketch here in terms of the asset disposal account. Just to revise the actual working, okay? I've given you steps here as well, just to process the realization. Um, you should have a pretty good idea of what the account looks like in terms of what accounts to have on the debit side, what accounts to have on the credit side. So let's first talk about the cost. Where am I going to put the cost? On the debit or credit? Um, on the debit. Correct. Okay, the cost of the vehicle will always go on the debit. So depending on what the asset is called, I'll either write equipment here, I'll write vehicles here, I'll write down the asset name here but it's representing what? The cost. Yeah. Okay, where does the accumulated depreciation go? On the credit side. On the credit side. So you'll always have the accumulated depreciation on that side of the account. Yeah. Okay, can I have a profit or loss? You can. Yeah. Yes, I can. Okay, the profit or loss on disposal, is that a cash flow? Um, no. No, it's not. Good. Okay, this is a non-cash item. Yeah. Because no one pays you the profit and no one, and you don't have to pay someone the loss. Yeah. There's no receipt, there's no payment, it's a non-cash item. Okay, so the only other thing that can go into this account is bank. And where would bank go on this account? It's going to go on the debit side. Why do you say the debit? 
because bank is always it's an asset and it goes on the well would it depend if you make profit or loss I uh, know it wouldn't depend if you made a profit or loss it's a good question um, it won't it'll always be on which side the debit okay for bank so bank will go up do you agree yes it will okay so then you're debiting bank and then what do you do to at a, at a disposal you're gonna credit correct okay so so the profit and loss will come when we actually balance the account off okay so Kirsty asked the question about um, will it change in terms of if I have a profit will bank be on the debit side rather than the credit side the answer is no it'll always be on this side okay so long as you've sold the vehicle using cash okay mm -hmm. okay so bank will always be there and the reason for that is the contra account is this okay so I can't undo the debit because when I receive cash that automatically happens bank goes up if bank goes up bank is an asset assets are debited yeah okay so you'll always have bank here and that's the important bit for the cash flow okay so when we look at cash flow later I'll talk about that again and we'll be focusing on trying to find bank trying to find the inflow or the outflow obviously in this case is this an inflow outflow it's a inflow. It's an inflow, yeah, because banks going up, you're debiting the account. Good. Okay, so so that's the asset realization. As I said, don't worry too much about it now because it only comes up a lot uh, a, a bit later in terms of the, the cash flow statement. Okay, that's, I think that's chapter six or seven in your in your textbooks. Okay, so um, we still have a lot to do before then. But as I said, these are important basics that you've covered before in 1502 that you need. In 1601 because if you if you've started going through your textbook uh, you'll see even in the textbook this the, the volume 2 they haven't given you any of this because all of this is all of this gets covered in volume 1 okay which is the the 1502 textbook so that's the reason why I said don't sell the first year um, if FAC 1502 textbook yet because there might be things you might want to refer back to um, for this module just in terms of brushing up in terms of your knowledge and your understanding just to make sure that the adjustments are, are, are okay and you're, and you're capable of, of doing them. Okay.